Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Ivan Puparev, and I lead an innovation team at Google Advanced Technology and Projects, where we're exploring technologies for urban computing, which is a vision of a future where computers are invisible behind the scene, helping us, supporting us, and augmenting our everyday activities. Today, I'm thrilled to be joined by Federica Casaleño, who is an executive vice president of Samsung, Samsung Electronics, and wears three different distinguished hats. First, he's, uh, he's the head of the Design Innovation Center. Then he's the head of the Next Generation Experience Planning Team. And third, he's the head of the Experience and Insight Lab at Samsung Research. Previously, Federico was uh, an associate professor at MIT, where he was also founded and directed the MIT Design Lab and MIT Mobile Experience Lab. So I'm thrilled to have a conversation today because it feels like we're really at the cusp, at the inflection point, suddenly witnessing a dramatic change in the way we think and use computing technology in everyday world, in everyday life. Uh, you know, there's virtual reality and augmented reality, uh, hot topics again. And, uh, you know, everyday life is moving more and more into the digital domain. And we also start buying, you know, a lot of digital goods and the digital assets. There's the NFTs, there is blockchain, the metaverse has become a center of everybody's, uh, you know, a lot of conversations today. And the interesting point here is if you try to search metaverse on Google, uh, you'll get pretty, uh, about 1.8 trillion hits. And yet it's really difficult, if not impossible, uh, to find definition what exactly the metaverse is. So in today's conversation, we're going to peel the onion, try to understand what exactly is going on and take a look at the bigger picture beyond metaverse, beyond the, um, the specifics and understand where we are going with the whole thing. So let's get started. Hi, Federico. Hello, Ivan. Hi, everyone. Great to see you. Um, this is my first question. So the metaverse, you know, is a science fiction term from 90s. Right. And uh, no, you know, when internet was young and we both were working on virtual reality, augmented reality, you know, spent a lot of time doing this stuff. And yet, in spite of it being a long time ago, it's still the latest buzz. Um, so to ground conversation first, I think it would be very helpful to establish sort of first common definition. So what are we talking when you talk about metaverse? What are you talking about uh, when, about this, this what's happening? Well, first of all, thank you for, for the invitation. And I'm honored to, to be here. It's such a pleasure to have time to, to discuss uh, with you. And um, if I, well, the question, you're right. Like uh, the question about the metaverse is, uh, is super interesting right now. It, and it's really the core of, of what, what's happening. And uh, uh, anyway, technically, we can see that uh, the metaverse can be defined as a real-time network of three-dimensional worlds in which people play, uh, interact, engage in social um, interaction and, and so on. But this is a, a, a very technical driven approach. Um, today I see a lot of uh, uh, emphasis in discussing which are the best products to access the internet. It's all about the uh, uh, headset on uh, virtual realities, is augmented realities, or is about computational capabilities. And, uh, you know, the technologies and, and new products that will bring us into the metaverse, into this digital world, are, are moving fast. And definitely, it's, uh, it's a very important topic. But, um, if I put my, let's say, humanist or social scientist hat, when I think mm -hmm. about the metaverse, uh, I can think to a, a French philosopher that I really enjoyed, and uh, uh, Gaston Bachelard, which about uh, 1960s, 58, he wrote the book, and it was called The Poetic of Space. Uh, and in this book, he argued that the physical architecture in which we live and our emotional, psychological architecture are deeply connected, are basically one. So when we think about the metaverse um, and what we discussed today is not only three-dimensional worlds, uh, how people play games in virtual realities or which are the best products that help us to uh, be in this uh, world, but it's really about that we're building the digital architecture that will contain uh, human interactions and will profoundly affect people's life. 
is basically where new generation will learn how to be simply good people, good citizen, uh, be well with other people, be nice to each other, be respectful, be inclusive. Uh, they will try to, uh, they will learn their, about their job, they, 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 they will learn, etc., etc. So it's really about uh, thinking this new architecture of the metaverse as, as environment that hosts social interaction and deeply affect our, our uh, peoples and societies. And uh, I think that's very important. And, uh, you know, when uh, uh, I'm Italian and in Italy, we have a lot of piazzas, uh, the, town, the town squares. And mm -hmm. historically, you see how piazzas are built is to uh, build uh, places, architectural places that hold social interactions. And in piazzas, you have uh, basically the city hall, which represent municipalities and, and the political power. Then you have churches that represent the, the, the uh, religions and, and moral guidance. And then you have banks and markets, which is the economy and how people can thrive and live their lives. So these are deeply thoughts in the way we architecture and, and design places for people to interact. So the metaphors, in a way, need to capture that spirit. Uh, we are building new places that profoundly Post social interactions. And uh, so that's why, you know, always says that knowing the past is a, is a good way to, to embrace the future. Yeah, see, yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. And um, so you, talking about the past, like we both spent quite a bit of time building VR and the VR applications before you know, in different forms. Tell me how you got into this whole um, discussion about this virtual, physical reality environment, how they come together, um, about your previous work a little bit. Well, um, I can recall at least two very important moments for me. The first one were in uh, 1994, and I was uh, starting my PhD in Paris. And I was actually part of what we call the BBS, Bulletin Board Systems, which are basically uh, online virtual communities where people uh, gather into virtual places for online discussions, to play games, to share documents and files basically is a, is a early stage of the metaverse mm -hmm. and uh, uh in 1994 this was like emerging emerging uh words and uh it was not very well known actually uh when it was in university we really had to stole a cable from the administration and apply three floors uh uh, upper in my university lab to plug an Ethernet cable and to create our own words because the social sciences and that's something happening. We need to be part of this. We need to study online interaction. So mm -hmm. basically, uh, I was part of these online communities and we're it's a local online communities. And here in the Silicon Valley, you have you know we're basically all started, but those BBS and what I learned is that the social interaction in the digital world and the social interaction in real life basically basically complete each other uh, right. in a unique way. So that was my life. And actually, we were the first university lab in, in the Sorbonne University to have access and study and be in the uh, 3D space. So that's one area where really understanding the digital and uh, social interaction. But a second point. Uh, I uh, after my finish uh, after I finished my PhD, I went to MIT, and mm -hmm. I started to work with Bill Mitchell. And uh, one of the projects we did, we built a, a full scale connected sustainable home. And this home basically robotically adjust and calibre energy production, energy consumption based on the user intent and user behaviors inside the home. So basically, it was a home. Who had the digital twin and were able to model uh, behavior, uh, model the energy consumption and production, to model the the weather condition and how people right. live in the house, right. and then bring this data back into the physical object. And oh. this is basically uh, what today we call synthetic realities. Right. And uh, so the metaverse, that's really uh, uh, in that case, we build a home with intent. The three and at that time we were talking about cognitive architecture oh. to, to understand that space. So it's really not understanding. Uh, it's really to understand the quality of interaction inside the home and, and proactively adjust the home in order to match user desires and needs. 
So oh. that's why we, so my approach to um, metaverse, virtual reality and augmented reality really uh, is on one hand human center, but is really, uh, really merging virtual and, and real reality in, in a unique way. Right, this is exciting. So, so when was this project? When when did you do the uh, this? We started uh, in 20, 2006, 2007, and we built the first the, the full working prototype in twenty ten, twenty eleven. Yeah, wow. and, right. and we bring together AI, robotics, and, and so on. Interesting, interesting. So, no, this is this is exciting, and that's I agree. And somehow now it's happening, right? I mean, now like all this old ideas coming together, and. Um, and, and I think this conversation, I'm not sure what the metaverse uh, is exactly, but it, it definitely hit the nerve for the public. So like it, it's because of this merger, as you just mentioned, the physical and real instead of like this one reality, I think it's actually happening and people feel it. Um, and general public can feel it. Feel it. And um, I would like to get deep, uh, dig a little bit deeper about the past because just as you mentioned, you've done this work in 2000, and it didn't happen over the night, right? It's not like one day we woke up. It's like, bingo, metaverse, we're living here. And that's great. Right? Yeah. It's been going for a long time. So maybe you can briefly talk about what are the, like, the most important ideas that emerged before, you know, uh, uh, today's sort of growing interest about this merger of the virtual reality and everything uh, that influenced today's discourse. Well, you know, let's maybe talk about some common themes yeah. which are interesting for you well um let's say for me when i um when i think now in uh, to emerging trends in the metaverse i'm thinking you know how uh, how people interact with technologies and and what the impact of, of technology in human life and uh, when i think about the the history of the same interaction i think there is a, a first phase where we uh, Basically, uh, around 68, Engelbart basically created the mouse. And, mm -hmm. and the idea is, how do you define the relationship between humans and machines? In a way? So in that case, uh, in a way, the designer was a master and had to box mm -hmm. in the user into very specific way to interact with the machine. If you don't interact in a way the designer defined, you will not get the benefit of that interaction. So that's why I'm saying, you know, the designer is the master and boxing the user in a unique way. Uh, then, uh, second phase, late 90s, we basically, um, we start to think uh, in terms of ecosystem of services. It's a larger way, uh, basically, to say you cannot think the simple interaction between human and machine, but you need to embrace all the relative services. And uh, in that case, the designer, become an orchestrator. Mm -hmm. uh, we are really in a world where complex economies and, and social activities are interdependent. So you need to, you know, you cannot design no man is an island. You cannot design one thing and, and exclude the other. Right, 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 right. Um, and the final phase, the third phase, is where we are right now. In a way, the designer become the creator. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in a sense, you create objects that understand users in a unique way, proactively understand and take actions. They use computational analysis to, to understand and model users and take actions. So we, our objects today are in a way subjective objects. Our objects have subjectivities. And in that case, uh, the designer is the creator in a way. And you mm -hmm. can think this uh, very simple example for with in the automotive industry. You know, step one is you need to design how the user uh, press the brake, otherwise the car don't stop and you have an accident. So that's really the interaction between the man and the machine. Uh, in the second phase, you really need to think uh, how the car is connected to services. So it's not only how the car works, but really how the car access to the benefits in the city. So you have a connected car. But today you design how the car learn uh, and model mm -hmm and take autonomous decisions. So the user is no longer the one who press the pedal, right. but the designer needs to teach the car how to become a good citizen, how to respect the environment, how to mm -hmm. respect laws and the other people in the street. So basically in that sense, uh, I'm saying that in a way the, the designer right now are 
the parents that need to de educate system uh, yeah. to behave well in an interconnected world. Interesting. Interesting. So, interesting. That's, that's, that's interesting. So basically, we're saying like, that's a something different way to look at this at, at, at the current virtual reality. Is it you know is it space you go with the virtual reality? But basically, what we're saying is that the idea here is that any object, let's say any object, whether it's physical object, you know, like a lamp or a table or a room or a car, or a digital object, you know, a, a window or a graphic representation of something, they will yes. have their own intent and therefore they'll have their own agency, right? And that's kind of, it's more, it's less about, uh, about like having this kind of virtual space and it's more about giving this agency to, 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 to the world. Is it, is it what you mean? So, because it's interesting yeah. because in this sense, this uh, what we're all really talking about is that the physical world and real world the boundary kind of disappears and it's sort of like uh, just one reality yes like, that's what you mean probably mentioned by synthetic yeah. reality that you meant right yeah. combine both worlds. is that what you mean is that what you're um yeah, that is correct i mean you 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 um there is a way to understand digital worlds and to design digital worlds but there is a deep impact in in the way we live and where we are uh, uh, again, you know uh, what? What uh, you know? We did lot of studies with, for example, Gen Alpha, uh -huh. and we're trying to understand what they expect from from a speaker, for example. Mm -hmm. So in the past, the speaker was all about you know designing the right button, the right interaction, so you can play music. Then speakers become a little bit more. So it's not only about music, but you know you can talk, interact, and 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 execute tasks within your home. Right. But now. Gen Alpha expect way more from us. They, they expect curated content. They expect friendship. They, spent, they expect to engage in a in long lasting relationship where the speaker tells you things before even you think you need it. Mm -hmm. So uh, the way we design how you, know, how you model interaction in the uh, digital world and, and, and in, the, in the real world is completely different. And that's why I'm saying, uh, you know, we need to be uh, designer and we good parents and need to educate our uh, subjective devices to to behave in uh, with good manner. Wow, interesting. So the designer become the parents to the speaker and the speaker become parents to the to the to the gen alpha <laughs> folks, right? That's it's, that's how it works. Uh, this is great. No, but, but this is very this is this is very different look at the view of the of the kind of, of what's happening with metaverse because I kind of feel it becomes very narrow quite often. Um, but before we talked about it, let me ask a question. So why now? Like, you know, we, we've been working again. I just, we've been talking about metaverse from nineties, you know, so it's nothing yes. particularly uh, exactly new. AR and VR have been around for a long time. And, uh, but now it's like, feels like really uh, kicks in. So what do you think happened now that make it um, so, um, so exciting for everybody? I think, um... There is there are always combination of, of different things, um, and I would say uh, today um, we see the uh, emerging of uh, opportunities for a totally new creative economy that is right. basically happening right now. So uh, I know that the audience is is well aware and knows a lot about. Uh, AR and, and VR and sy synthetic realities. But I think what is really interesting is that we have a, and right now we're entering in an era where there is a great opportunity to fuel creative economies at the global level in a mm -hmm. very new way. So I recently read a, a, a statistic where basically 36% of millennials in the United States own cryptocurrency. So that's the mm -hmm. difference. Of, so things are really happening. So, and these are great opportunities for new generation to engage and unleash creativity in a very unique way. Right. Um, so that's one area. The second, and this is related of course with NFTs and, and uh, uh, virtual goods that basically uh, in, really enable the metaverse to be an extension of the real world economy in, in a way that we have not seen before. So that's a, that I think is, is one big area that I think is super important. The, the, the second point for me is um, we're really shifting from, uh, and, and of course the computational capabilities and new products coming to market really 
um, uh, help and foster this transition today. But the second point, we, we shift from uh, uh, social media and social networks into immersive environment, which is really a new way to see things. And of course, we'll be, we'll be in immersive environment through VR sets or goggles, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, um, you know, with social media, uh, uh, people used to leave experiences and then uh, uh, capture and, and tell story about their experiences through social network. But you still need to go to Disneyland. You still need to go to the Louvre Museum in Paris. And then you, you engage in social conversation. In right. the metaverse, you design the experience itself. Mm -hmm. So it's really shifting where you can start to engage in uh, playful activities, entertainment, and, and so on. And, and the metaverse become really the, the, the virtual architecture that hosts those activities. Uh, and you think, you think this sort of, uh, what, what you're saying is sort of, in a sense, it's a change in the way we use technology. It, it's, it's a social change as well as technological change. Which one do you think plays a big role in the current conversation? I think that uh, there is always a, a, a mutual synergy between social and, and technological and economical changes. And uh, I think you know, right now we can uh, do things with technologies that were not possible before. So right. technology is really, in a way, ignite creativity and show uh, tremendous opportunities. And and uh, uh, but again, is for me is how we can bring this back into. Um, into a human center metaverse, humanity center mm -hmm. metaverse, really to, to drive the agenda rather than leaving in a way technologies uh, alone. Mm -hmm. So how that's interesting. So so the uh, and, and you just mentioned that some of the technologies are the, the creating. I think there's a combination of factors, right? So yeah. there's a, one part is that um, the the society is changing. Obviously, yep. another part technology is changing. Yep. And you mentioned about uh, changes in society, right? The fact yep. that people spending uh, uh, a lot of time now in digital world is definitely one big aspect. But uh, like, which technologies yes. do you see? Like, I, I'm technologist fundamentally, right? So I, I'm yes. really uh, excited about. It. What do you think technologies? What technologies, in your perspective, would become important for this future? Um, just in general terms, for the future of that uh, kind of changes in the, uh, the way we interact with the digital information. What, what are these technologies you think um, most important? Well, NFT, um, blockchains, virtual reality, graphics, phones. Uh, mobile phones, like what? Uh, well, I, I know your amazing capability. I know you're designing those technologies. So <laughs> I, I'll wait for, um, for, for you. But definitely, I know uh, all of the both. So you mentioned, you know, the NFT and cryptocurrency that really mm -hmm. uh, is a great way to uh, to fuel creativity by basically creating a way to identify digital asset in a, mm -hmm. in a new way and, and, and track them. So we're no longer in, in the proliferation of, of digital media that can be reproduced at the oh, infinite before, yeah, yeah. but each digital asset become uh, identifiable. So basically you, you create a new way to, to bring economical value to a unique asset and, and so, try to, that's super yeah. important. And I agree, but it was, it, it again comes back to like sort of like a theme of conversation which seems emerged is that you know there's a sort of parallels between digital world and physical world, right? And yes. one of the things about digital world was always that you can copy as much as it's infinitely yep. copied, you know, like the every like 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 in like in Matrix, yep. you know, like Agent Smith, you know, Agent yes. Smith. So infinitely copied information, but by bringing sort of this NFTs, we're building this sort of like we, we're kind of creating also yes. uniqueness, which is Absolutely. also yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. So also, this is very, this, I didn't think about it. It's an interesting point. So uh, digital assets become just as unique as physical because in the physical world, yes. everything is unique. Every single yes. object is unique. That's that's an interesting point. It's an interesting point. Um, I'm very interested about, and, and I also think that the impact of technologies, we, we don't really understand the impact of technologies until yes. we start using them. And okay. um, the... What do you think is is um, 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 like one of the impact I'm, I'm wondering about is this uh, the communication bandwidth dramatically increasing? So we're going to 5G, we're going to Wi-Fi, yeah. always always on, always connected. Um, speaking about like the, from the social social just 
what do you think is how that's a impact the social um, dynamics of using interfaces and in, 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 you know metaverse and everything else? Yes, I think um, as we said. Um, by the way, this weekend I was a uh, uh, I was at the uh, NFT art exhibition here in San Francisco, and and mm -hmm. uh, I've seen amazing work. So definitely, right. you see the creative community and economy is really. Uh, coming to the street and being accessible. So definitely there is a new new economy that is developing. But um, really to, um, uh, in a way, to, to answer to, to your question about, you know, what, what are things that are changing? I think, uh, again, um, there are few things that um, are very important to me. And the first one is if you have a humanity center approach, you start mm -hmm. by identifying what is important for people and mm -hmm. then try to ban technological development to support people's life, not the other way around. Uh -huh. And uh, that's very old. I mean, for, for us working on, uh, on experience, innovation is very old. Uh, for one of the, um, one of the greatest thinker of last century, Martin Heidegger, basically he was uh, uh, giving a, a, a talk to a conference in Berlin, uh, mm -hmm. 1951, after the Second World War. And he was addressing his speech at uh, an audience of architects. And All what right. he was saying, say, hey guys, you are here to uh, engage and rethink how you want to rebuild Berlin. But before thinking about architecture, bricks, pipes, and tubes, you should look how people live. You should really bring and understand people's aspiration first. So you then can bring these into. So this piece, uh, building, uh, dueling, and thinking became very relevant to you know, those who think and work in, in experience driven design. And again, I think that the, at the social level, we have an opportunity uh, to avoid some mistake that we did in the past when we mm -hmm. developed, for example, social networks and, and mm -hmm. see how we can bring and develop technologies in a unique way that fulfill or, or uh, address uh, people's aspirations today. Right. right. So. So yeah, so you know, that's that's extre extremely important. I think it brings me to the next question that I want to talk about. Is that I think the um, the classic, uh, if you look at the history, look at the history of a very successful um, uh, emergence of the form of interaction, of form of computing. You know, if you think about the web, if you think about uh, classic graphical user interface, you know, developed by Xerox Park and populated by and popularized by Apple. Um, so you will see that it's just as you said, it's often built around fundamental principles. You know, fundamental core yeah. kind of core of ideas. It doesn't start with design necessarily. It starts with yeah. sort of formulating of the core ideas, design principles. You know, in case of familiar uh, interactions, the meta use of metaphors, um, use of direct interaction where you point on things with your mouse or with your finger on the touch screens. Uh, you know, providing consistent feedback. You know, boxing information in different working areas so you can minimize the amount of information on the screen. Yeah. You don't just like throw at people like you know gigantic yeah. amount of, of stuff. <laughs> so an interesting point is that when you start building these core principles, then the form of interaction, the form of actual interface, it emerges from that so almost like organically, right? Because Correct. once you define those boxes and gu yeah. guidelines, right? The form would would emerge, right? So this is, so I, I think we will not be able to build the metaverse of this talk, right? Or the whole whole kind of defini definition of the metaverse. But maybe you can start talking about some of the, some of those core principles, right? Uh, and you just mentioned one of them, um, the uh, you know human centric design. I would love to talk more about it too. And um, but let me ask you. So what do you think? Are, what are the most important principles you think are which can become these core directions? Yeah. For the um for moving forward i think you, you said something that i like uh, very much and and you brought the attention to this uh organical uh development of of interfaces so we you know as you said we used to box in people and and what i mentioned before you know you used to box in people and now you develop organic interface and and i think there is a very interesting area for us to consider mm -hmm. is that we are shifting from uh you know 
when we shift from social interaction to immersive interaction, in a way, you, you experience reality without being there. So you experience reality by removing a lot of the cultural paradigms, uh, linguistic, social, economical paradigms that usually people apply when you discover new things and new environment. But now you experience in immersive reality the realities. So you experience in your uh, true emotions. So basically, you're organically connected in a very different way. So that's, I think, a very interesting point. And uh, but as a, you know, as we are looking as as the uh, as we are looking at the at the metaverse, I see that there are three, in a way, three key points for mm -hmm. uh, my say my vision for the future. And we say the, the first point is, uh, as I said before. Uh, Technology without humanity is perfection without purpose. So oh, up to yeah. us to bring purpose in the equation. So right now, for example, today we are talking about the importance of, of learning, the importance mm -hmm. of work and life balance, the importance of digital disconnection, of mm -hmm. uh, diversity and inclusion at all levels in our society. And these elements are not disconnected from the metaverse. This element need to be waved in at the design phase so we right. can get it right, not afterwards just to correct those. Mm -hmm. So again, this uh, paradigm is new. Um, and also this is also even more important because we are designing object with intent. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, you design uh, uh, robots that uh, um, define mortgage and uh, insurance rates you design right. ai to uh treat and 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 uh, treat and, and work with the health of people you, de you design self-driving cars so and these things takes time we need to uh patent new technology to behave in a way we want right. so that's number one the second point is um technology technology and creativity really go hands in hands mm -hmm. i mean Technology can really unveil uh, amazing possibilities and creativity can take advantage and, and bring it this to, to uh, very far. You know, when uh, uh, mid-1800, uh, mid, uh, when uh, it was invented, the paint tube, uh, mm -hmm. this unleashed tremendous creativity for painters. Uh, before yeah. painters, they used to say in their own studio and atelier and paint faces and and and, uh, and fresh fruits but then suddenly they they could go out and this is how the impressionist started to create uh, amazing uh paintings so you have monet manet pissarro renoir and so on so the technology and creativity really going in hands in hands mm -hmm. and, um, and the third point which i think is very important to me it's really the designer and, and technologists, they have a, a great role to play and they need to work uh, from day one uh, together. Um, I think really you know, these environment are not only a technological environment, but really social environment where, where people learn, grow, et cetera, et cetera. So again, it's really about how we can drive the development in a way that benefit uh, humanities and, and societies in a, in a unique way. Mm -hmm. So that's a... Interesting. So, but yes, I'm, I'm going to also to maybe dig, dig a little bit deeper, deeper and maybe a little bit, um, a little bit, uh, uh, you know, um, specific. So, you know, like one thing is interesting to me is that, first of all, I completely agree that, that you know, create, like all this point you made. Um, but, but what's interesting to me is that uh, once we're talking about spatial interaction, right? Yeah. Like interaction in space. So one thing is that, like, do we think how people could have been tracked with that environment is is that, I mean, obviously mouse and touch screens suggest one-to-one -one interaction because yes. you stop on the computer. So the, like, what's kind of interface is going to be when there is a constellation of devices, the devices are all, all around us, and, and, and there's no, you don't interact with one device, but as you said, interacting not with the device, you interact with the experience which these devices create together. So this yes. is a very different way to interact from what we interact right now, when we have like one device, one touch screen or mouse, and we touch the buttons. Um, 
is this uh, what would be like more specific? I'm not suggesting to resolve, but like yeah. uh, like how would you go to build build those those interactions? Well, um, it's interesting. It, on, on one way, how we can think the way we can access uh, virtually digital worlds, so augmented reality headset. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, virtual realities or even like with the existing technologies, how we can bring the interaction to a next level uh, from the individual standpoint, but also collectively. Mm -hmm. uh, people now is really accessing to not only to play games, but to assist and engage in, in entertainment experiences or, or fitness and, and sports. So I think that this is a very interesting area that uh, will um, uh, definitely emerge and, and pursue. But the other point is actually very true, uh, which is how we can wave in into the physical reality, exactly. intelligence that really understand uh, uh, people's behaviors and intent mm -hmm. and support people's behavior. So, you know, the, from in a way, uh, we, we see a lot of technologies already that, that works like that from, I don't know, smart thermostat that really understand how people behave in, in the physical environment and try to model the behavior of the home in a unique way. Yeah. So that's, you know, step one, but really the possibilities start to be uh, really enormous. And I think it's very exciting for technologists and designer to have this opportunity to be in, in the starting line from day one and, and really to bring this forward. This has to be has to be cycle. I absolutely agree with that. So, um, my other, in, and of course, I think I, what, what I feel is that in order to build this, you kind of need to build reusable blocks, I guess, right? So yeah. you can, you know, what, what you're mentioning, building these best practices of interaction, how yes. to put them together. It has to be platforms, right? We have to be yes. platforms which both, and this platform gives uh, a space for designers and technologists to work yeah. together. And build those experiences and experiment and change, yes. change, change, change going forward. Um, so, and my, what else, you mentioned the interesting thing there. You mentioned that you know, as we building this, uh, we're trying to understand what people want, and we build mm -hmm. environments based on that, right? But this is not how the world world is 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 right. Like yep. the world is here, and we kind of learn to survive there. And evolution is very is very very slow process, right? It's, you know, it takes you know millennials and millennials for us to adapt to this world. We clearly cannot wait for another million of years of the you know yes. for the for the next product to come up to come up, yep. right? So, so, um, and how do you think we can kind of like move this conversation forward? How how, how can we uh, speed up uh, this this evolution, right? So like because. What you are saying, actually, with, with just think, thinking about you, we're trying to create even, in a sense, a better reality, right, than uh -huh. the real one, right, and faster than the better reality, yes. right. So instead of us evolving, adapting to the physical environment, we're trying to create the world, which yep. adapts to us, right. So, is that? Can you develop a little bit, uh, sort of elaborate on this point because this is this is interesting. I think you're, you're, you're again, you're totally right because. Um, um, there are different speeds between uh, social, technological development and, and, and societies. I mean, they, they have different speeds, um, different goals, different agenda. But uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, already this talk is a wonderful opportunity to bring to the, mm -hmm. to the table, uh, you know, a, a, at least an engaged discussion of how, you know, technological progress and, and uh, design and human advancement can, can really work together towards uh, different goals that are not only, you know, we don't want to push only what technology can do, but it's right. really about what they can, what technology should do in order to design this world. Right now, the only thing is that uh, we cannot say that uh, we cannot pretend we are ignorant. We know that these environment are, are deeply affect our societies. Um, right. We know that uh, uh, playing game online is a wonderful way for for the younger generation to grow to learn. So instead of designing and then asking teachers and educators after, you know, how do you use it? We should bring educators from day one to co-design with people and technologies. So I guess um, it's up to us to really bring this activity together and really work with uh, multidisciplinary teams to, uh, to face uh, the complex problems that, that those new environments 
create. At the end of the day, we're talking about the metaverse in one end, but we are talking about synthetic realities because this, uh, because we, we still live in a physical world. Yeah, yeah. The, this is, uh, and we'll go to questions in a second, but I, I, think you, I think this is a very interesting point emerged, is that we, we kind of thought, and I'm going to paraphrase it a little bit, we kind of thought about sort of digital world independent from itself, right? You know, gaming in itself and apps in itself and social networks. We never thought about it as, as, yeah. as um, we thought about it as a, as a sort of different thing. You know, it, it exists on its own and, and, and we kind of don't care. But you brought a very interesting point that we can't pretend that digital environments do not impact our physical life. So and that's Absolutely. why I think this yeah. vision of synthetic reality starts making more sense. Absolutely. Because, right? So, and and I think we see a lot of a lot of this happening right now when we're understanding how how digital slash uh, and that's what I think metaverse is right it's, yeah. it's how it comes into the physical world and stuff affecting our real life. Now I think this is great and um, I think we should uh, go uh, to questions. So um, let's um, uh, let's go to questions. So uh, and I see question one. How do you see media, entertainment, and gaming and social interaction for them evolve in the metaverse? The well, that, that's, a, that's a very interesting question. These are the first things that we're seeing in the metaverse. And uh, uh, there are, I believe, uh, first of all, to, um, as we said, unleash the creativities of a new creator economies where really, um, uh, with the new tools that we have available, we can really bring the online experience to the next level. Uh, and these immersive realities start to be really, really uh, interesting. Uh, and the more we go and the more we see the, the, the potential. And, uh, and actually, you, you and I discussed in the past, you know, Second Life was probably one of the first, you know, metaverse environment that, uh, and, and really, uh, you know, there is still a, a, a an office down my street here in downtown San Francisco. So anyway, I see I see them there. So um, on one end, creative is common, and two, the uh, the advancement of more and more sophisticated technologies like VR headset and mm -hmm. and more that really bring user into the into the space. And three, how do we really rethink? new interaction paradigms that are totally new. So I guess these three elements uh, provide on one hand wonderful opportunities and on the on the same time that we're saying is a good, uh, there are a lot of things that are happening in the entertainment and in the gaming industry that will surprise us uh, in, in a, for, you know, future. Wonderful. So next question. The question is, do you think uh, AR devices could be widely adopted for educational purposes? And if so, uh, how could this technology change the way we approach education? Yes, that, that's a fantastic question. I mean, augmented reality devices absolutely can help education. But as I'm saying before, educators and, and humans, in a way, they need to be in the picture, in the design phase from day one. Um, uh, those environment are uh, th this environment are the new language of new generations, and and if we design it well, definitely we can bring uh, tremendous opportunities, where we will be no longer discussing uh, digital well-being and digital disconnection or or how to turn off notifications, but we're discussing how we can really engage in learning environment which has tremendous possibilities and they have been designed in the right way with the, the right ethical compass from day one, not, not at the end. Yeah, interesting point. So I actually wanted to mention um, that, you know, the augmented reality is often we often think of as a follow-up question. Yep. Augmented reality, we often think about as, you know, physical environment and, and very much visually yep. kind of aligned with the, with the physical, the combination of two. But there's not this old old concept of mixed reality, right? Exactly. We're talking about yeah. that there is not, yeah. you know, either physical or virtual, but yes. some sort of continuum where the yeah. element of physical reality is being um, augmented with the, you know, computational. 
So yeah. where did, like how how do you feel about you know education or gaming? How do you feel about this continuum, you know, between physical and AR? Like because I always feel that like the best AR would be AR where I don't have to wear the glasses or wear any devices, right? So how what would be like is it projectors? Like what would be the uh, other mediums we can explore? Well, um I guess uh, on one end, uh, I love the idea of projector. I love the idea of, uh, for example, using projector for uh, augmented reality in the physical space. So you can augment the, the auras of information around objects and places in, in the physical space. So what, as, as we are saying, there is a, an increasing um, mix and symbiotic relationship between uh, physical realities and digital realities. But this, in a way, every technology is really um, bring us one step forward. I mean, books were an amazing te mm -hmm. technology to bring people's imagination in uh, amazing imaginary world um, right. with different speeds, uh, different technologies. But this was, you know, a travel in, in, in fabulous world. So now we have even more powerful technology. So this is why we, we need to pay a little bit more attention and, and, and design it in, in the right way. Yeah, interesting. No, this, this uh, yeah, um, there's a whole conversation about storytelling, but I don't want to go there. It will, be, it will be another hour of discussion. Um, so let's, uh, let's have uh, another question, please. Uh, is there any concern that A, things, things might get too much agency putting humans in the back seat. He'll take over the world. Uh -huh. um, B, corporations have a tendency, tendency to slip into too much techno-optimism and technological determinism. So there's two questions in one. So the first yeah. one, they ask, uh, do you think, where does it find the boundary about things getting too much agency? In, in like, like you, because you mentioned, it's, it's a good question. Yeah. Because you talk about the human first. Uh, how can, what, what are your thoughts about it? I think uh, uh, again, both questions. Things um, the 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 question of agency would be actually one of the most important questions moving forward. Who is responsible for what? If you design system that uh, learn from other system, you know how how can we think who is responsible in in the? As we said before, we're no longer. Uh, or not only designing cars, for example, we design autonomous vehicle that uh, learn from sensing, uh, learn from uh, AI and, and uh, from other cars and then take autonomous decisions. So you know, who is, the, the question of agencies is tremendously important. And, um, and I think this will be one of the fundamental questions that uh, we'll, uh, we'll need to discuss, like you know, how we can have a you know, AI world organization that really protect uh, uh, people in the way we want. Yeah, and, and I think that actually comes back to what you mentioned before, is that is that the way to approach this is to always remember that humans go first. I mean, you, you know, yeah, yeah. it's just, we, we, I, I agree with, with that sometimes we get too carried away by, by the, the, these opportunities. And the second part of this question was, um, so that, that the corporations has quite a bit of the uh, technical optimism yeah. and sleep well, and, and become technical determinism, yeah. you know. So um, how do you think, uh, do you think it's the case now? Do you think it's, uh, how can we make sure that we can have a checks and balances in, in place? Well, um, in a way, the, there is a, a sort of optimism uh, which bring a corporation to, to jump into the system, I guess, uh, but again, the, I, I'm, I'm trying to picture where this optimism is. I haven't seen a lot of discussion on the optimism in the metaverse on how we can design amazing virtual environments to, uh, to increase and to educate children or kids. Mm -hmm. It's more about you know, uh, technologies or, or economical return. So there is an optimism uh, on one end, but we need to find why there is this optimism. And secondly, um, mm -hmm. we, we're talking from a very privileged environment. I mean, between the, you know, you and I, we're, you know, we're talking from the Silicon Valley with a lot of amazing things are happening and, mm -hmm. and, uh, with a community of, of creative technologists and, and designers here, we have, 
the opportunity to drive this optimism in the way we want. So not just uh, as, a, as a facade, but really try to drive the agenda as, as, we're, as we're saying. Yeah. So, and it's, yeah, it's a good point. If there's no optimism, nothing happens. You know, like, so exactly. it's hard to create something if you're pessimistic. Yeah. It's not going to work. Let's give up. Yeah. Right away. yeah. Um, no, that's, that's, that's a good, great, a great question. So next question, please. Yes. Um, when we think of the metaverse, we think so much about technology. Uh, what is the role of design and designers in creating the metaverse? Um, again, that's a, that's a something that we have, uh, uh, in a way, uh, discussed. And uh, I think uh, designers and, and, and technology have this unique opportunity to bring together engineering, bring together uh, social sciences, uh, bring together technological development and see how we can contextualize this development, development in, in our societies, in, in the physical environment or our homes and cities. Right. At the end of the day, designers, they design products. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have those products in, in our body, uh, in our close environment. So, and because we are bringing technologies closer to products, we have an amazing opportunity to drive innovation with a good mindset in a way. Mm -hmm. So that's how, uh, how we see it. Yeah, so that, that's, that's great. And I think it reminds me saying, which we um, quite often talk about, is that uh, so design and art, um, yes. challenges technology and then um, and that's what the role of design is design art tells technology and technology is enables new design and and the uh, and the art right? so it's sort of a circle of a circle. Around, yeah. and as a design, designers are first problem makers exactly. that's right. make the nice problem first then we can engineer the solutions that's uh, right. that's problem right. making is really the the dna of of great designers right. Exactly. And then technology is what inspires new designs, right? That, that's what comes back to optimism. Yeah. Techno optimism inspires designers um, to come up with new uh, ideas. And, and designers are the ones who are actually yeah. taking the human, human centric part. They have to be kind of representative users, but then they will challenge technology to, um, uh, to do better and to, to improve yeah. in response. So I think yeah, that's great. Um, uh, next question, please. When do you see modalities, headsets, glasses will become usable, power, compute, business, uh, affordable cost, and socially acceptable uh -huh. to have uh, long engagements versus uh, snacking? So I guess the question is, is that like snacking by me, like it's very short term interactions, which people try yeah. and probably can drop. Yeah. That's another uh, great point, a great question. I mean, uh, you know, historically, we have seen the, the development of technology uh, becoming smaller and smaller, smaller, closer, closer, closer to our body, uh, start to be inside our body. And uh, uh, definitely uh, one of the point that we need to really to, to understand is, is how those technologies become socially acceptable. I mean, we, we're still struggling a little bit uh, with the use of mobile devices, for example, you know, in certain culture or, or center um environment you you know it's not considered uh, acceptable to interact with your phone where we are socially engaged in, in a live discussion so we need to learn um how we can uh, design the interaction and the attention between the user and the device and and the social interaction that the user is engaging and and uh, uh i i think yes we will find a solution how we can design new technologies that extend our possibilities to ar vr or see through ar and and uh, we live in the city, so definitely that's that's a good direction. But absolutely, we need to uh, do it right, and that would be very. Anyway, it's a good challenge for for designers really to get it right. But now we know that there is a a, a big problem that we need to address, and uh, we need to make sure that we uh, put ourselves in the right uh, spirit and uh, give ourselves the the right chances to to find the right solutions. All right, thank you. And last question, one more. Um, what cautionary go no goes do you foresee for digital and tangible interaction development? Um, what should we not do? What we should do? Like, like, what's the what should be uh, we caution? Well, the question, of course, what should yeah. not be done together? Well, again, I will start for for um, uh, you know. Uh, I immediately think, rather than immediately thinking in the technology, I, I, I would rather think, uh, even though these are like fundamental problems, 
but how do you really think uh, which are the human values that you want to bring into the the into the way that people interact with technology? So we have a you know discuss for example um, digital disconnections or uh, how much is important for people the uh, mental personal well being with physical well being. Mm -hmm. uh, those interactions, those elements need to be brought in in the way we design products, in the way we design an AI system that learn and take proactive actions. Mm -hmm. So, in a, uh, so I guess these are the, the the important problem. As I said, we we are now creating subjective objects, and uh, you know now we have created. Uh, uh, notification system on on our, our devices because we try to push technological progress in a way. And now we are thinking when is a good moment to activate or deactivate notifications. So how do you teach the system to really get the, the right notification in the uh, in, in a very personalized way to the individual person in the right context in the right moment in the right location and bring the right information up to the users. In a way, we spend the, uh, there's a lot of time to educate kids. You know, what is the right moment to interrupt the conversations? And right. uh, and now we have to educate AI system when is the right moment to interrupt them when I'm doing something meaningful and you want to bring something. So I guess this framework really again starting by values and purpose and bring wave this in into every step of product development right. will be our best chance to create wonderful environment through synthetic realities or metaverse that really foster people's imaginations and, and people's life. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. I guess, yeah, I agree. Technology should adapt to us and we, we should not be able to spend yeah. all this effort to adapt to technology. That's, that's a great challenge. So I think, uh, I think we're almost uh, uh, close at the hour. Uh, any final point, Federico, before, uh, before we close this conversation? Um, uh, I, I think, uh, 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 as I said before, technology without humanity is perfection without personal. So we should really start to develop with the human humanities and planet at the very core and, and bring this forward. And the second point is uh, we're facing extremely complex problems from economical, technological, social, uh, psychological, and, and so on. So we really need to bring designers and have a designer's uh, approach to bring multidisciplinary teams to work together with the right ethical compass in order to bring this development further. So, you know, I, I really hope and envision a humanity-centered metaverse for a better tomorrow. <laughs> Wonderful. Wonderful. So, um, no, this, this is great. This is a great way to, um, to close this conversation. And I think, you know, um, Ernst Hemingway once said, like, um, gradually, then suddenly, and I think that's what's happening right now with, with these ideas. We've been working for many, many years, and suddenly they come to, to actions. And this is exciting, right? Yeah. I mean, again, I think it's it's easy to be a skeptic, right? Easy to say, Absolutely. well, it's not going to work, you know. But yeah. I think it also opens this amazing opportunity to do to change things, to make them better, to build yeah. better technologies. And really, I, I agree there has to be balance between techno optimism, but also making sure yeah. we're doing the right thing, right? And I, I like what you said, is that uh, it's building the better reality maybe the synthetic reality can make the world better versus we're trying to you know uh, again create a new environment they have to adapt to that's really going to ring 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 the bell for, for me and I, I think it's exciting opportunity which probably could be as foundational and and well changing as, as the web uh what do you think yes absolutely, yeah, so, absolutely right so we should we should um we should think how to do it right absolutely um, yeah. Thank you so much, Federico, and uh, for joining this conversation. It was a lot of fun, a lot of interesting um, uh, mind-expanding ideas came up from that. And in closing, I would like to thank Tokus Google team uh, for enabling this great conversation. Thank you for your coming today. Thank you for our listeners. Thank you for people who uh, asked uh, excellent, great, uh, mind-provoking questions. And thank you again, uh, Federico, for such an insightful conversation about the history and the future. Uh, Thanks, thank Steve. you all. Thank you for the invitation. It was great to, to talk to you and, and look forward to continue conversations. And thank you for Wonderful. the invitation to the Google team. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.